வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் செஷன் ஆஃப் த ஹேண்ட் சர்ஜரி குவிஸ் த ஃபன் வே டு லேர்ன் ஹேண்ட் சர்ஜரி question number 1 the x ray view shown below is taken to view joint erosions it is called berman x ray robert x ray ball catcher view or brewerton view and the correct answer is the ball catcher view the ball catcher view or norgard projection or posterior oblique view of both hands is taken with the patient seated alongside or facing the table and both hands supinated with their dorsal surfaces placed on the cassette with the hands rotated medially by around 45 degrees like one about to receive or catch a ball this particular view is ideal to assess erosive arthropathies like rheumatoid arthritis the berman x ray which was mentioned as one of the options is taken in this position with the ulnar side of the hand placed on the cassette and this particular view is ideal to visualize the first carpal metacarpal joint space the base of the first metacarpal convex profile and the trapezium concave profile the robert view is an antero posterior view where the hand is internally rotated so that the thumbnail rests against the cassette and this view ideally visualizes the carpal metacarpal joint of the thumb and finally the brewerton view is taken with the palm facing upward with the dorsal surface of only the fingers placed on the cassette with the wrist extended and metacarpophalangeal joints flexed at about 60 degrees this view is ideal to show erosions of the metacarpal heads and the bases of the phalanges from rheumatoid arthritis question number 2 the fracture shown below has been classified as type 3 in the classification by sorter harris ao classification alcatan tulipan and ilias and the correct answer is the fracture shown below has been classified as type 3 in the classification by alcatan alcatan has classified pediatric phalangeal fractures in 2001 under this classification system the type 1 fracture of the phalangeal head is a stable non displaced fracture in the type 2 fracture there is a dorsal displacement of the condyles but contact between the bony surfaces is retained to a certain extent in the type 3 fracture there is dorsal displacement of the condyles with rotation of 90 degrees or more so the fracture surface is perpendicular to the dorsal aspect of the phalanx the tulipan ilias classification which was proposed in 2016 is a classification system for open fractures of the hand taking into account the factors unique to the hand that affect its risk for developing infection after the fracture question number 3 the characteristic features of the giant cell tumor of the radius shown below are the following except occurs only with an open growth plate usually a butt's articular surface well defined non sclerotic margin usually eccentric and the correct answer is occurs only with an open growth plate which is not a characteristic feature of the giant cell tumor of the radius basically there are four characteristic radiographic features when a giant cell tumor is located in a long bone it occurs only with a closed growth plate it usually abuts articular surface and in about 84 to 99% of the tumors they come within 1 cm of the articular surface they are well defined with a non sclerotic margin though about less than 5% may show some sclerosis and they are usually eccentric but if they are large this may be difficult to assess question number 4 the following x ray shows congenital radio ulnar stenosis radio ulnar syndesmosis radio ulnar arthritis or radio ulnar synechiae
and the correct answer is the x-ray shows congenital radio ulnar synostosis. Congenital radio ulnar synostosis is a rare condition where there is an abnormal connection otherwise known as synostosis of the proximal ends of the radius and ulna. In this condition, the most common complaint is limitation in forearm rotation with preserved flexion and extension of elbow. And the diagnosis is based on depiction of the bony fusion of the proximal ends of the radius and ulna on direct radiograms but may need computed tomography. Cleary and Omer have described four different radiographic patterns in congenital radio ulnar synostosis. Type 1 where there is no bony involvement and the radial head is in normal location. Type 2 where there is a synostosis but with a normal radial head location. Type 3 where there is a synostosis with a posteriorly dislocated hypoplastic radial head and type 4 where there is a synostosis with an anteriorly dislocated radial head. Question number 5. The characteristic x-ray below demonstrates what sign? The signet ring sign, the Terry Thomas sign, the sail sign or the ulnar positive variant sign? And the correct answer is the Terry Thomas sign. The Terry Thomas sign denotes an increase in the scaffold lunate space on an anteroposterior radiograph of the wrist. This increased distance indicates scaphol lunate dissociation. This sign was described by the American orthopedic surgeon Victor Frankel who named this sign after the well-known British comedy actor Terry Thomas who had a frontal dental diastema that is a visible gap between the two maxillary central incisors. In fact, the story goes when permission was sought from the actor to use his name for a particular sign. He was very happy to provide his name for the sign but insisted that there be a hyphen between Terry and Thomas because he did not want to be called Mr. Thomas. The scaphoid dissociation that this sign represents is associated with scaphoid ligament disruption and may be associated with scaphoid subluxation, rotation and potential corpus instability. And the normal scaphoid interval that is measured at the midpoint of the adjacent parallel articular contours of the scaphoid and the lunate bones should be less than 2 mm and scaphoid dissociation or what we have seen as the Terry Thomas sign most commonly described for intervals more than 4 millimeters. Sometimes the scaphoid often rotates to a more transverse position indicating the scaphoid angle to more than 60 degrees and if it is so rotated, the x-ray shows the end on view or the signet ring sign. The sail sign, otherwise known as the fat pad sign or the spinnaker sign is a finding on elbow x-ray which suggests occult fracture of one or more bones at the elbow. This is caused by displacement of the fat pad around the elbow joint which could occur both anteriorly or posteriorly. In children, a posterior fat pad sign suggests a condylar fracture of the humerus and in adults, it suggests a radial head fracture. Question number 6. The X-ray shows Bennett fracture, Rolando fracture, Boxer's fracture, or chauffeur's fracture. And the correct answer is the x ray shows a Bennett fracture. The Bennett fracture is a fracture of the base of the thumb metacarpal resulting from forced abduction on the first metacarpal. This fracture was described in 1882. It is an intra-articular two-part fracture of the base of the first metacarpal bone. The unopposed pull of the abductor pollicis longus causes subluxation of the first metacarpal bone. The Rolando fracture on the other hand is a three-part or comminuted intra-articular fracture dislocation of the base of the thumb. The boxer's fracture is a fracture of the neck of the fifth metacarpal bone and the chauffeur's fracture otherwise known as the Hutchinson fracture is an oblique fracture of the radial styloid process in the forearm which is typically caused by compression of the scaphoid bone against the styloid process of the radius. Question number 7. 
the salter harris fracture shown below comes under the category of type 1 type 2 type 3 or type 4 And the correct answer is type 2. The Salter Harris classification of physial injuries or fractures is important to know. There are 5 types from type 1 to type 5, and there is a very simple mnemonic with the very name S A L T E R. Type 1 of the Salter Harris classification is a fracture of the cartilage alone, which accounts for barely 5% of the total injuries. This can be remembered by the letter S which stands for separated. This fracture which separates the epiphysis from the metaphysis. In type 2 which is the commonest among the physial injuries, the fracture line extends through the growth plate into the metaphysis. This can be remembered by the letter A which means above. The fracture line extends above the epiphysis. In type 3 the fracture line extends through the growth plate and below into the epiphysis. This can be remembered by the letter L which stands for lower. In type 4 Salter Harris, the fracture is through the metaphysis, physis and the epiphysis. This can be remembered by the letters TE which stands for through everything. And finally type 5 where the physis is crushed due to compression. This can be remembered by the letter R which stands for rammed. The epiphysis rams into the metaphysis. Question number 8. The dislocation of metacarpophalangeal joint of the index finger in this x-ray is classified as complex dislocation, complicated dislocation, unstable dislocation or simple dislocation. And the correct answer is, the x-ray shows a complex dislocation of the metacarpophalangeal joint of the index finger. As far as metacarpophalangeal joint dislocations of the fingers are concerned, they are classified in different ways. But the classification according to the complexity of the dislocation is either simple or complex. In a simple dislocation, which is usually a subluxation, there is no interposition of the volar plate or the sesamoids and the base of the proximal phalanx remains in contact with the metacarpal head. This pattern of dislocation is reducible and there is a hyperextension of the proximal phalanx on the metacarpal head with the flexion of the proximal interphalangeal joint. In the x-ray, the proximal phalanx is typically perpendicular to the metacarpal shaft. In a complex dislocation or a complete dislocation as it is sometimes called, there is interposition of the volar plate and or sesamoid bones. The metacarpal head becomes entrapped by the displaced natatory ligaments distally, the superficial transverse metacarpal ligament proximally. This may persist as the Kaplan's lesion. This pattern of fracture is typically irreducible and there is a bayonet positioning of the proximal phalanx with the skin dimpling in the proximal palmar crease. The x-ray shows the proximal phalanx is almost parallel to the metacarpal shaft. Question number 9. The type of syndactyly shown in the x-ray below is a simple syndactyly, a compound syndactyly, a complex syndactyly, or a complicated syndactyly. And the correct answer is this x ray shows a simple syndactyly. In a simple syndactyly, the fingers are joined by skin and soft tissue only. In a complex syndactyly, the underlying bones are joined together typically at the level of the terminal phalanx and in a complicated syndactyly there are extra bones and abnormal tendon or ligament attachments. Question number 10. A patient presents with two weeks painless swelling in the hand with no history of trauma. The x-ray is as below. The diagnosis is osteomyelitis, spina ventosa, enchondroma or osteosarcoma.
and the correct answer is Pina ventosa. Pina ventosa is another name for tuberculous dactylitis. This was first described by Boyer and Nelaton. Pina meaning short bone and ventosa meaning expanded with air. Tuberculous dactylitis is the skeletal manifestation of tuberculosis where the short tubular bones that is phalanges, metacarpals or metatarsals are affected. It follows a benign course without pyrexia and acute inflammatory signs in contradistinction to acute osteomyelitis. There are a few characteristic features on X-ray for tuberculous dactylitis or spina ventosa. The involved bone shows a diaphyseal expansile lesion. Periosteal reaction is very uncommon. The healing is by sclerosis which is usually gradual. I hope you enjoyed this session of the hand surgery quiz, the fun way to learn hand surgery. Please comment on whether you found it difficult or easy and most importantly whether you found it useful. And please scan this QR code with your mobile to instantly access the YouTube channel to see the latest in learning hand surgery.